And offensively for the New York Giants, I am not a New York Giants fan. I'll be very clear when I say that. But I am a fan of, of I've, I've always been a fan of good. What are you talking about, Jesse? I've always been a fan of people who are in position who are good at what they do, regardless of team. Except Mike Krzyzewski. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan. Sidebar. Go Heels. But I like Brian Dayball. I do. I think he's one of the I think he's one of these coaches in the league who kind of gets the modern day football. He understands how to the, the story that that really showed me that Brian Dayball was one of those coaches who can kind of he gets it. He relates. As a player, you always want your coach to be stern, to be to be to be in control. But I don't want to feel like I can't or you can't relate to me. And one of the stories that always kind of intrigued me about Brian Dayball, when he first took over um, the New York Giants, they drafted Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon. Now, like most of these other players, they always have these side hobbies. And it, some is art, some it's business, some it's rapping, Right? And so Kayvon Thibodeau used to send his mixtapes to Brian Dayball. Think about this. Kayvon Thibodeau, a 19, 20, 21-year-old black kid. Brian Dayball, 40-something, 50-something-year-old white male. I'm sure that, that those two aren't on the same wave rap length. I'm sure Brian Dayball ain't pulling up to the to the joint telling myself, you know, ski. I'm sure Brian Dayball isn't. I'm sure Brian Dayball isn't downloading the latest Lil Wayne album or Drake album or Yellow Bees or whoever. I don't know these young rappers nowadays. Jay-Z, Drake, Lil Dirk, Lil Baby, Lil Somebody. But Kayvon Thibodeau was sending his mixtapes to his coach. And Brian Dayball was actually listening to him and sending Kayvon feedback. I was like, you know what? This dude gets it. It may not be his cup of tea. I'm almost positive rap music isn't his cup of tea. I'm almost confident that 75% of stuff that Kayvon Thibodeau might have been saying in those raps, he had no clue. But he made his star player feel like, hey, man, coach is all right. Coach, coach, <laughs> yo, he actually sent me a video of him listening to my mixtape. And he gave me feedback. And what a lot of you probably don't know is how long that goes in the locker room, how well that sits in the locker room. When your players feel like you get them, when your players feel like, the coach-player relationship is more of a partnership than it is boss to employee. I want to be able to feel that my coach understands who I am, not as a football player, but as a person. And I grew to like Brian Dayball from that. And I knew that he was going to be able to help transform this football team from what used to be a booty juice football team under Joe Judge and Jason Garrett and Gettleman in the front office. And in year one, he took a team that had no business going to the playoffs to the playoffs. Daniel Jones, who led the league in turnovers, cut it in half. More than half. And you see him rebuilding the structure of this football team. It's honorable. It's admirable. And it's going to make for an exciting football game. You're going to match wits versus wits. Brian Dayball, who I think is really good offensively. Mike McCarthy, who I think is really good offensively. They're going to lean heavily on Saquon Barkley. They got the young rookie and Jalen Hyatt, who's a burner. By the way, 
That worries me. Cause I saw, I saw Stephon Gilmore in practice. Stephon Gilmore can't run with these young boys. He can't. If he plays anything in front of him, he's good. Mentally, he's good. Concepts good. Reading routes good. If he got to open up and run, hold your head. We know we know what Trayvon Diggs is, but we also know that he'll bite on the route every now and again. He'll cheat. He'll get a little greedy. And so they're looking for that. And then the X factor that we don't really talk about a lot, but it's going to be something that's hard to worry about, is Darren Waller. Darren Waller's a beast. I like the matchup. Darren Waller versus J. Ron Curse. The heart and soul of this defense, not Micah, is J. Ron Curse. That's going to be a fantastic matchup. This is going to be, this is going to be strength versus strength, wit versus width, chess, not checkers. Freaky Mike versus Wink Martindale. Brian Dayball versus, versus Dan Quinn. It's going to be, it's, it's, this is a heavyweight bout. This is going to be a heavyweight bout. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think we're, I think we're getting ready to see what this NFC East is going to be. It's going to be a war of attrition. With these defensive fronts, it's going to be the last quarterback standing at the end of the year to determine who is who. This is, you couldn't, you couldn't ask for a better Sunday night football matchup. I, I like this matchup. I'll tell you later on in the week who I think is going to win. But something has to break. Dallas hasn't won a season opener on the road in 12 years. Let me repeat that. The Dallas Cowboys have not won a season opener on the road in 12 years. I told you earlier, the New York Giants has not beaten Dak since 2016. Something's going to change. Something's going to change. Either the Giants are going to beat Dak or Dak is going to, the Cowboys are going to end that road, that, that 12 year road record in opening games. The storylines are there. It's New York City. It's actually New Jersey. My hometown. Shout out to Jersey. What's up, Jersey? Roselle? Roselle's listening. 908, what's up? Union County, what's up? Roselle, what's up? But this matchup is one that's going to be... It, it, you might have an instant classic. You might have an instant classic. I, I'm, I'm really, really do... I'm feeling you might have an instant classic. You might have one of those games where you're like, whoa, this how we open it up the year? With, th with this type of banger? You're going to see the Cowboys at its best. I think you're going to see the Giants at their best. Every single year, you have to be able to reset. Build on what you did last year. The good parts. And then build from the bad things that you did this year and correct them. We still want to see, and, and I, I, let me not say that. We want to see it. But I, I do think the turnover thing that Dak had last year, I do think that that was more of an anomaly than it was a normal situation. History says that he didn't turn the ball over like that. Last year was different. I think he's looking for get back. He wants to rebound from that season. And he wants a new contract as well. You make it a lot harder to get a contract and a lot harder for them to pay you if you come out the gates and you got two, three turnovers from a quarterback position. I also want to say, this is, this is another sidebar for me, as a former NFL receiver, I think that NFL receivers, tight ends, running backs, if the ball hits you in the hand, the chest, the head, and, and, and is deflected and goes to be an interception, that should be a stat that's on you. If you drop the football, if it, if it hits you in the, I shoot you in the chest, I'll wet you. Remember that on Kings of Comedy? If the ball hits you in the chest, and you, you, you bumbling the ball around, and it's intercepted, that should not go on the quarterback. That should go on you. That's your fault. Bum, it's your fault. 
If the balls hit you in the hand, hit you in the hands, and it it goes off your hands and intercepted, that's your fault. It ain't the quarterback's fault. Why should he have to hold that intercept? That's your fault. If you run him with the ball, if the, if, the, if, the, if the quarterback throws you the ball and you run with it and you fumble it, don't go on him. It go on you. Same thing that should go. You should inter, interception stats should also be going on the running backs, receivers, and tight ends. You should be held accountable for your lack of concentration. If you don't want to catch the ball, go play safety or DB. Period. Go play safety or DB. But this game is going to be fun. This game is going to be fun. There's a lot of intriguing matchups. Tyron Smith, the old grizzled vet against Kayvon Thibodeau. Do I think Kayvon can overstrength him? Uh, outstrength him? No. Do I think Kayvon Thibodeau is more athletic than him? Sure. We're going to see if Tyron can move. We're going to see if Tyron can move. The old grizzled vet, the old wily vet, 13 seasons. Kayvon's going into his second year, third year, second year. That inside's going to be tough, man. That inside's going to be tough. Whoever they decide to play at left guard, if it's not Tyler Smith, we'll be fine with Zach Martin. Zach Martin's going to be fine. It always has been. Tyler Biotis, you are in for a day, son. You are in for a day. A day. Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, dogs. That's going to be key. Keep that pocket clean. Let Dak get the ball out. But defensively, oh, the Cowboys are coming too. Micah is, Micah has seemed to be more poised and more ready to go in year three than I've ever seen him before. He is ready. I am ready for him to be on the field. I Unleash him. I've said this before. I'll say it a hundred times. If Micah is dropped in the coverage, if Micah is on the sideline, if Micah is anywhere except rushing the quarterback, wasted rep. He should be on attack mode 24-7. Every snap that he's on the field, he should be going forward. And if he's not, Dan Quinn, you wasted a rep. You've wasted a quality rep from him going to get the quarterback. He should be in hunting mode all day from the time the plan lands in Nork International Airport. He should be in attack mode. You, Dan Quinn, you should just start calling out blitzes. Not even blitzes. Just calling out things when Mike is going to get the quarterback. Just call him out. Stand in the line to get food. At the omelet line in the morning for breakfast. Micah should be going forward every single time. This is going to be an interesting game. I look forward to it. Sunday night football. Cowboys, Giants. That's just, oof. Man. And, and, and playing your division rival is always tough. I don't care the records. I don't care what the history is or, or what the past is. You play your division rival team. You play twice a year, every single year. It's going to be a tough game. This is no different. We're going to see what the Cowboys can do. What are we going to see? I'll make my predictions later on in the week of what I think the Cowboys are going to do in this game. Win, lose, or draw. You guys let me know on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, at Mr. Fourth and Long. While you're watching this, like, you know what, Jess? Let me know. Let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any questions about the game.